We'll spend a little time on non-public sessions, and now um, it's suitable for you to, if you don't have it, I want to make sure you do have it, I'm going to be going over this checklist that was produced uh, by Cordell Johnson of our office, and we have found if you're going to comply with the right to know law in terms of non-public session, it's going to be best to follow the checklist. So before I get to the checklist, there's a couple of rules of the road I want to talk about. It's a non-public session. It's not a non-public meeting. There's no such thing as a non-public meeting. Every time you meet in a non-public session, you always start at a public meeting. So, for instance, you could not convene in non-public session. You can only convene in public session and vote to go to non-public session. Public meeting, non-public session. Um, and a non-public session is different from a non-meeting. A non-meeting is something the law recognizes is not subject to the right to know law. It doesn't give the right to attend and of the public and the notice and et cetera. A non-public session is the exception, not the rule. It is, it's supposed to be the rare exception when there are unique circumstances dictated by the statute where a public body can meet in non-public session. And non-public sessions are permitted, but they're not required. And this is oftentimes a question we get, you know, and especially it comes up in the area of reputation, 91A3, uh, Roman 2, subparagraph 2, uh, Roman 2, uh, subparagraph C, you know, the reputation of someone not a member of the public body. And we can talk about that some more if you'd like. Um, that there is this concern that somehow any time someone has a concern that a discussion might harm someone's reputation, however slight, that somehow the person whose reputation is in jeopardy has a right to demand that they have a non-public session, or that somehow a board is required. Well, we have to go in the non-public session, aren't we required to do that? Well, that's not the law. The law is if the public body decides, based on the law, a non-public session is merited, yes, you can go in the non-public session. So again, non-public sessions are permitted, but they're not required. So when is the more likely occasion we'd go into non-public session? Uh, so when you're hiring a public employee, and it's, by the way, hiring a specific public employee. Let's assume for a moment the select board wants to talk about generally the fact that we need to hire another police officer and we need to look for another police officer. Or we want to set up a procedure to, to hire a company to help find us a new police officer. That's not a discussion about the hiring of a particular person. It's only when you have five candidates before you, you've got to choose one of the five. Now you are discussing the potential hiring of a person to be a public employee. That's a public, a non-public session uh, opportunity. Uh, the other one, which is often re referred to and sometimes difficult to understand is this dismissal, promotion, or compensation, investigation of charges, or discipline of a public employee. It has to be one of those attributes. And interestingly, not in this is what if you're just simply doing a review of someone's performance. Technically, you look at the statute, it doesn't say performance review is covered by a non-public session. Now, if you were coupling a performance review with a comp compensation review, yes, you could go in the non-public session. So non-public session would also be for the purpose of discussing um, the purchase of real or personal property where the interests of the public body are adverse to the interests of the public at, uh, the, the, the citizens at, at, at large. So easy example is the town wants to buy a piece of property. It has $100,000 in its pocket but doesn't want to offer $100,000 because they want to save twenty. So you go to the, the person who owns the property, offer them eighty. Now, you don't want to let that person know you're prepared to pay $100 because then you, you wouldn't get it for the cheaper price and save public dollars. So that's a, a subject you can discuss in non-public session where the interest of someone else is adverse to the community and you want to get a better price for the purchasing of uh, a piece of uh, property or personal property. If you want to discuss pending lawsuits, that is lawsuits which have been threatened in writing um, by a municipality against someone else or by someone against a municipality, that can be discussed in non-public session. You can discuss emergency preparations which are designed to thwart a imminent threat of terrorist attack, which is kind of a narrow circumstance. And you can also now go into non-public session to discuss legal advice. 
is 91A3, Roman 2, subparagraph small letter L. Um, and that allows you to go to non-public session to discuss, uh, you know, that you've received legal advice orally in writing from your town attorney. So those are the, the, the bases for going in non-public session. So now what I want to do is to go through the form. And literally, if you follow the form, you're going to comply with the right to know law. So looking at the form, step one, you want to indicate on the form, and you can, and by the way, you can download this from our website. I can show you where it is, and you can modify it for the name of your municipality and make it all work perfectly for you. So first you have to list who are the members present. Easy to do. Uh, you can then, in the same section, you can see a motion is made to non, go into non-public second, and seconded by the person who's making the motion. That's re actually required under the statute after a motion in the second. And then you would cite the specific statutory reason. Ideally, what you would do on the form, you would check which one applies. So let's assume you're going to check 91A3, Roman 2B, the hiring of a person as a public employee. The person would read the motion accordingly, and they would check that box. Then um, you would have a roll call vote to enter non-public session. Again, you would list the names of all the members of the public body, yes, no, and then you would remove the tape. Continuing on to the second page, you then uh, would list, A, when you enter non-public session, and other persons who might be present during the non-public session. Let's talk about that for a second. Generally speaking, the only people in the non-public session should be the members of the public body. However, there may be times where you have to have others present. So if you had a town manager like Hampton does, the town manager might be there to discuss the hiring process. You're in the middle of hiring someone, the town manager has essential information. Or you're in non-public session discussing buying a piece of property. The town engineer has to be there to talk about some of the attributes of that property and why you want to offer X, Y, or Z to the seller of the property. So there will be circumstances where people not members of the public are present. Generally, however, you want to limit those who are going to be in non-public to just the public body and those essential public employee or maybe consultants and others who may be necessary to help the board do its job. Then you have to prepare minutes, and the form for the minutes is right here. All you have to do is fill it out. So I wouldn't even bother to have a minute taker. You can just have someone write notes here. What has to be in the minutes? Well, the statute now requires you essentially to have the same information in non-public meeting minutes as required for regular meeting minutes. So you have to note um, the names of the members present, other people participating or attending, uh, a brief summary of the subject matter discussed and any final decisions reached or action taken. And that's the other thing that sometimes people get confused about. Can we vote in non-public session? Yeah, you can vote in non-public session. It actually now requires you, when you do vote in non-public session, that you have to be able to, as the statute say, um, indicate the, the manner in which each person voted. So it doesn't really explain, you know, as it says here, um, in, the voting information must be in such a manner that the vote of each person is ascertained and recorded. I think it's easier just to assume that in non-public session you're going to vote probably to do by roll call vote. So, excuse me, so if you had a non-public session where you had five candidates for the police officer position and you wanted to offer the position to candidate A but not to candidate B, C, D, or E, you could vote. We'll offer it to candidate A and of course you want to keep that sealed because you then need to have the staff go out and make an offer to candidate A and make sure candidate A agrees and accepts the position before you give notice to candidates B, C, D, and E they didn't get the job because you may have to go back to candidate B, C, D, or E uh, if candidate A doesn't accept the job. And that's again, makes complete sense. And so you would record, you know, the select board was in attendance, they received a report from the town manager, it was recommended that you hired uh, candidate A, board voted by roll call vote to offer the job to candidate A, instructed the town manager to uh, take the necessary steps to make the offer. And you would write that out in this section of the materials. Uh, and then uh, you would make a motion after you've completed that non-public session, keeping in mind you're in non-public session, you want to limit your discussion to that very topic. I had an interesting conversation with a town, and I know this happens a lot. Uh, there was a situation where the the, the the police department wanted to have a non-public session. They were urging the select board to have it. But the select board kind of figured out 
that they really didn't want to discuss the hiring of a police officer. They really wanted to get into non-public session to discuss something else, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to limit your discussion in non-public session to the reason why you're in non-public session. If you go to the non-public session to discuss hiring of a, of a police officer or a public official or a, or, or a public employee, that's what you discuss. You don't discuss anything else. Once you stray from that topic, you're going to get in trouble. So you make your motion to go to leave non-public session, and that does not have to be a roll call vote. Uh, it has to either passes or doesn't, and then you uh, resume, you stop the non-public session and the a public recording, uh, and you move the uh, non-public meeting tape is removed. If you keep one, I'm not sure it's a good idea to keep a, me a tape of a non-public session, and you indicate the time the public session is convened. And then the next section, which is, which is important, is you then have to decide, do we have a basis to keep what we just created as a non-public session minutes <coughs> sealed? Now, the statute actually doesn't use the word sealed. What it says is, presumptively, everything done in non-public session must be recorded and must be made available to the public within 72 hours unless the public body determines one of three things. To release the information would adversely affect someone's reputation, or to release the information would render a proposed action ineffective, or the discussion pertained to the preparation of carrying out of actions regarding terrorism. So it, it's kind of a reverse kind of uh, approach to the concept of what you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to do is automatically release these minutes unless one of these conditions apply. So most of the time, you're going to find that a member of the board would make the following motion. Mr. Chair, I would move that we keep non-public the minutes we just completed of the recent non-public session because if we didn't, it would render ineffective or the proposed action ineffective. So someone has to make that motion, and then um, there has to be a roll call vote again. You have to record the roll call vote of those who are in attendance, yes or no. Um, so if you follow um, the checklist each and every time and use the checklist not only to tell you what to do with regard to the non-public session but to record your minutes, you're going to comply with the right to know law.